Europe probably is the most difficult uh, part of the operations. As you see in the news, the Greek crisis and the threat of it spilling over to Spain and Portugal and others has meant a very tough uh, six months uh, for us in Spain, uh, also in the UK, Belgium and Holland. Uh, but I think we've probably stabilized at a, at a low level now. So I think we're through the worst. Uh, we don't expect a, a V-shaped recovery, uh, but I think we, we probably have seen the bottom of the cycle where we are at this point. Yeah, I see these results are showing a loss for the Iberia operations. I think it was 74 million rand. Can you perhaps give the market something to think about in terms of when you see profitability returning to that business and what kind of conditions would uh, enable that uh, part of the business to be profitable again? Uh, yes, I mean, we have, uh, you rightly so, incurred a loss in the period, although a chunk of that, about 30 million, relates to redundancy and restructuring costs and uh, taking out in excess of 300 uh, more people to, to realign the cost base. Uh, looking at the future trends on investment expenditure in Spain, we're not expecting a substantial recovery to around mid-2011. Uh, hmm. And I suppose now, given also the kind of problems that we're seeing, uh, people are potentially talking about the possible difficulties for Spain, surely you can't be comfortable. Well, I think we've taken a lot of cost out of the system and this recent restructure will take a further annualized 8 million euro saving, uh, which is about 80, 90 million rand. So we believe we've got the, the business to a position now where it can break even to be marginally positive even at current low levels of activity. Yeah. Away from uh, Europe, we're also seeing very difficult trading conditions you talk about in Angola and Southern Africa as a whole. Where is the difficulty given that we have seen uh, commodity prices uh, rebound from the laws that we saw last year? Yes, I, I think that there's two aspects to that question because on the automotive side I think we've already seen a recovery and their operating profits were up 23%. Uh, where we ha are still seeing con uh, continued difficult conditions are in the Caterpillar Equipment Southern Africa business um, and I would split that again into two areas. On the mining side we're already starting to see a recovery on the back of commodity prices having recovered but the construction side still remains uh, weak and I I think in South Africa we saw a big run up uh, to the World Cup. Uh, I think there will be a, a, a short term, uh, a bit of a fall off in, in construction activity. But I think the medium to long term prospects still remain encouraging. What is the problem in Angola though? Uh, in Angola, there have been significant uh, delays in payments to large uh, contracting companies by, by the Angolan government, uh, and that has led to them holding back on their expenditure until such time as, as payments get released. The government has announced recently that it will start releasing payments to contractors, and we think when that happens, it, it will lead to a rejuvenation in, in uh, uh, infrastructure activity again. Mm. Let's talk about the one bright spot that we saw in this result, the automotive business, as you mentioned, uh, the business profitable, the business actually increasing revenue and uh, that's on the back of the rebound that we've seen in car sales. How robust is that recovery? Because all the other numbers that we've been seeing are suggesting that the recovery will be slow, but these numbers are not saying slow. Yes, I think it has been a very good result by the automotive division uh, this six months. Uh, you recall that, that new car sales in South Africa have dropped 50% from their peak, but from January this year have started to recover. And the business performed well across all areas. So the motor retail business did well, the Avis car rental business did well, and the fleet services business did well. So I think we, we, we certainly threw the worst on the automotive side, and I expect a, a continued strong result for the full year. Mm. And what about uh, on the uh, World Cup we're seeing? Uh, the World Cup now just less than a month to come and I suppose Avis should continue doing well on that front. Yes, we, we, we have increased our car rental fleets uh, compared to last March by about 2,000 vehicles which is about 270 million rands worth of cars in anticipation of increased activity over the World Cup and so we are expecting over that, uh, that period uh, an uptick in our car rental activity which should be good for profitability. Mm. If I can just go back to the, uh, the retail side of the motor business. Uh, the last time that we spoke, I think, if I remember correctly, there were difficulties with bank approval for loans. What kind of uh, approval rates are we seeing now and what kind of rates do you see going forward? Yes, I think we have seen a slight loosening of credit conditions, so the average consumer is finding it marginally easier uh, to, to get access to funding to buy a car, and certainly that's one of the reasons why we've seen an uptick in the new car market since January this year. Hmm. As for the outlook, I mean, the, global, the, 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 the outlook for the global economy is uncertain. I mean, one time people were saying, oh, we've done the, the, the worst of it, and uh, things are likely to improve from where we are now, but now, with all the difficulties that we're seeing in Europe, it's beginning to look gloomy a little bit again. From your side, 
How do you see the outlook, particularly in Europe, where the, the, the troublesome businesses are? Well, I think firstly, on a, on a global basis, 2009, uh, the global economy shrank by, by two percentage points, which was the, the first time that's happened since the Second World War. So it, it was catastrophic. Most uh, forecasters are saying three to three and a half percent growth this year. So I think there is a, is a turnaround in sentiment, and across most regions we're seeing it. Europe probably is the weak sister. Uh, the last IMF forecast we looked at said one and a half percent GDP growth uh, this year. But that could be under threat if, if uh, the Eurozone don't get a hold of this Greek crisis and, and contain its spillover effect to some of the other regional economies. But if they do, I think uh, Europe's growth will be anemic, but it should still be positive for this year. And in Southern Africa? Uh, South Africa is technically out of the recession. We're forecasting 2 to 2.5% two economic growth for South Africa Very this year. Yes, uh, conservative, but uh, rather have it that way. Um, and I think outside of South Africa and in, in the sub-Saharan African countries, probably a bit stronger growth there. And uh, we're well placed for that because of our exposure to mining and infrastructure. Where do you see that growth coming from though? We do know about the difficulties that you've spoken about in Angola. What about Zambia? What about Mozambique? Are you seeing any kind of traction gaining momentum there? We certainly are. In Mozambique, we've won two very large um, coal mining contracts um, uh, for our Caterpillar business in northern Mozambique, the Valley contract and, and the, the Riversdale uh, contract award. So Mozambique is, is going strongly. There's some rejuvenation of activity in the diamond mines in Botswana. And with the copper price having got almost back to peak levels, we're seeing uh, the Zambian copper belt in the Congo looking much more favorable. Mm, you're not talking about Angola? No, Angola for the, for the time <laughs> being is weak. Uh, uh, and uh, we expect probably the next six to 12 months uh, will, will remain uh, a bit tight. But with the oil price having got up to $75, uh, $85 a barrel plus, that's 80% 80, 80 of, of Angolan uh, revenues are, are linked to that. And that means strong foreign currency inflows, which should be good for their, for their future growth. I suppose we can't talk about m and activity at this juncture. I mean, it's all about bedding down and making sure that the business is operating optimally. Yes, I think through, through a financial crisis, uh, what you've got to focus on is time tight expense management and strong cash flows. And again, uh, although our, our, our profits were under pressure this six months, our cash flows were very strong. Uh, and uh, that means that the group balance sheet is strong and uh, we're well placed, uh, we believe, for when the, the recovery eventually comes to our businesses.